All right, hey y'all. Wanted to talk to you today about a hodgepodge of things. And um, it's fresh on my mind. I've got some notes here to kind of keep me on track. And I didn't feel like changing clothes and putting on my normal SAT shirt. I just got out of a workout and helping with coaching some classes. And this is me, you know, like a figure, like it's good sometimes to just see me the way that I am. Cause this is the way most people see me anyway, when they're coming in and out of the, the building here. Um, but the topic of this talk today is called You Are Not Alone. And it was inspired by a visit that I had with a client this past week. And this person was going or is going through our superhuman transformation, which is our 10 week program, the SHT. And she's having a difficult time. You know, we're um, into our sixth week right now. And the last time I saw her, we were at the end of four weeks. And, um, and it was at one of the group meetings, you know, and, and I had gotten some hints that she was having some difficulties and challenges earlier than that because her husband has been through the program and just rocked it and everything changed great for him and he loved it. And she was really struggling with it. So I just told her, you know, I recommended that she made a visit with us and, and come and sit down and, and just talk things out a little bit because we love to do that kind of thing with no plan, no structure, you know, just to sit and kind of get a feel for where things are and see if we can help in any way. And, um, uh, you know, and I think the first thing that I wanted to say to her when she came in was, you know, if you're struggling with things, like you're not alone. When it comes to implementing real food, like a lot of people struggle. And so when she first came into the office, you know, um, that was the first thing that I said and she opened up and she was like, you know, that's really good to hear because here I am watching my husband go through all these great changes and just loving it. You know, oh my God, we get to eat eggs and bacon and butter and I'm losing weight and feeling great. And she's looking around her and other people going through the program, they're all losing weight and feeling great. And from her perspective, it's like, why is this not happening this way to me? And the first thing I said to her was, you're not alone because what she's seeing is all the great things. And she's not seeing a lot of the people that are having the difficulties and challenges because sometimes those people aren't as vocal with things. And we all go through our own transitional phase. And I, I think it's, it's beneficial to understand that not everyone has this amazing experience when they transition to real food. And it doesn't matter what version of real food it is. It doesn't matter if you're transitioning, trying to do paleo or low carb or ketogenic or vegan. Like there's some people that respond really well, no matter what. And there's a lot of people that have a really hard time. And I told her that some of our best examples of people that like, look and feel amazing and really understand and get what we're teaching and preaching are the people that have been doing it for a year, a year and a half, two years, three years, four years. Because if, you know, many of those people did not see dramatic changes in their first 10 weeks or even their first three months to six months, but then if they stuck with it and they believed in it and they kept sticking with it and kept tweaking and messing with things and coming to talks and learning and paying attention to our videos and posts, then sure enough, over time, something starts to shift and change. And it's really interesting the way the body works. I mean, the body prioritizes change in its own way for each one of us. And we have no idea how that's going to happen, which is why we have our general guidelines that we throw out. And then we, we encourage and nudge people through personal self experiments to try to see what works for them. So the second thing that I asked her was, and this is a very genuine question because, you know, I really care. We really care. Um, you know, it was like, I really care. We want to see you down your path. Do you believe that we really care? And she was, she said, yes. She's like, I, I really believe that you're doing this for the right reasons and you really want to help people. And that made me really happy because we do care. Everything that we put out is from the heart. And, um, you know, I was having a really good conversation with Jody rail the other day. We were just talking about like careers and college and education and what we're doing now and the correlation or non-correlation between what we went to school for and just all kinds of different things. And, and I was just sitting there thinking, I've had this thought before, but you know, if I was a billionaire, if I, if I won the lottery, if I inherited a lot of money, I would still do what I'm doing right now because I just want to help people. I want people to figure this stuff out. And this visit with this person is a classic example of someone, even when they're given the right information, it's difficult to figure this stuff out. And I just feel like we have a very unique message and a unique way of sharing this information. And it's what I want for everybody. And if I had all the money in the world, I would be finding out a way to continue to do this with people, except we'd have a lot of help and we'd have better production value. And, and, and we're going to get there. Like all that stuff's going to happen. But that made me really happy for her to understand that we really care. And I want all of you to understand that we really care. We're doing this for the right reasons. We want to help you. We, we're not putting out information to make your life miserable. 
or to make things difficult or to make things challenging or to be restrictive for the sake of being restrictive. We didn't regurgitate stuff out of a book. I mean, this is based off of a lot of information, um, ancestral wisdom and current relevant science and a lot of client experience. And we continue to change things and hone things and tweak things. And, and there's a really beautiful, um, genuine and powerful love intention behind everything that we do. So that was really good to hear you say that. Um, so then, you know, I, I, I had this discussion with her where we talked about like, um, you know, think about what we're teaching. And because w what I can hear in these conversations sometimes with people is that there's some resistance or some hesitation about what we're doing. And, and so I said, think about what we're teaching, you know, step back and look at the big picture. What are we teaching you? We're teaching you how to eat real food. We're teaching you how to eat fresh real food. We're teaching you how to sleep better. We're teaching you how to meditate and to spend time outdoors and to get into nature. I mean, I mean, who would argue that that is not beneficial? you know, not good for health. So then the question is within that realm, what is it that you're struggling with? And that opened up a good discussion because, you know, she made the point that she felt better when she was eating her breads and sandwiches and pretzels and, and fruit in the morning and all this other stuff. And, and so that opened up a good discussion around this, this fact that just because you feel good doing something doesn't mean that it's good for you. Uh, a lot of times the body gets habituated to dealing with things and it does it in a lot of different interesting ways. You know, sometimes like you have elevated stress hormones for a significant part of the day just to deal with stuff and those elevated stress hormones make you feel better. You know, it's like, um, it's almost like having some kind of a, an adrenaline shot or something. And, um, and I certainly remember back when I was my most toxic, you know, just before my, my, the, just the point at which I just, I couldn't take it anymore and I had my diagnoses and all that. Um, I remember I, I felt like I felt pretty good. I didn't feel like there was a whole lot wrong. I mean, you know, now that I sit back and look at my symptoms, there was a lot wrong, but at the time I felt like things were kind of okay, you know, didn't think there was much of a problem at all. And, um, and now that I know how I feel and how I've progressed with all this stuff and my mental clarity, emotional stability, my body composition, my performance in the gym, like anything and everything about me is better than it was. And now I can compare and understand like, no, I was not doing good, but I felt like I was. And I think for a lot of us, even when we're doing the wrong thing, we don't really realize how bad it is. And then if we're doing things wrong and we transition into doing the right way, things the right way, the body's going to go through this tremendous adjustment. And it's almost as if the worse we were doing things before and the more habituated we were to things before, the more difficult and long that transition is going to be. I've had clients that I've worked with for three, four, six months before they got through their blood sugar handling symptoms like headaches and dizziness and nausea. But sure enough, if they stuck with it, there was light at the end of the tunnel, the fog lifted, and all of a sudden things started to click. But just because things felt better when you were doing things a different way, doesn't mean that, that those things were good for you. So then the question is, and I asked her, do you believe that what we're doing is healthy? Do you believe that things like wheat and breads and pastas and things like that are not good for you? And she was like, yeah, kind of, but she wasn't completely sold on it. So then I realized, you know, it wasn't the place for this long discussion about wheat and the problems associated with wheat. But I realized there was some, uh, there, there was some room for some further education. So one of my recommendations was for her to read a couple books. And of course, yes, you know, it, to a degree, it's like cherry picking some books that I feel like are going to make a good argument against that, but they, they're solid books with some really good scientific resources and references and footnotes and all that kind of stuff. And if nothing else, you know, you can read a book like that and add it to your background wisdom and, and you don't have to buy into everything that you read in it, but at least it will give you a little bit of confirmation about the, some of the things that we're talking about. So, um, what we know is for sure, what we absolutely know am convinced of, Oh yeah. And I remember I told her this, if I, in, in my first couple of years when I, when I was first starting and, and first started as a professional and keep in mind, I've been doing this since 2012, late 2012, my first couple of years or, or maybe my first year or something like that. If someone came in and they were having a hard time, like I would panic, I would freak out and I would try to do everything that I could to change things. And like, okay, what's wrong? What do we need to do different? You know, what am I doing wrong? And, and there's a really, there's a big self-conscious component to that whole thing. And, and also like I was panicking because I wanted them to feel better. And, and you know, the reality is now the, the longer I do this, the more confident and almost the more arrogant I get with our methodology, because it's not just one methodology. It's a methodology of methodologies. And what we know for sure, absolutely convinced of is that real food is the answer. 
And our definition of real food is very broad and forgiving. And I think people sometimes get this idea that we're all about meat and fat and bacon. And yes, we do embrace that stuff, which is different from what a lot of other methodologies embrace. But we're also all about balance. And I told this person, like, if you were to look at my daily meals, I, I mean, I think over half of what I eat is plant matter based. Like last night I had a huge arugula salad with roasted beets and some goat cheese and some primal kitchen um, Greek uh, salad dressing. And then I had some bobar cooked in some butter with some cut up um, ham from the Vegas food co-op. So the meat component of that was maybe like a fourth and the majority of that was plant matter based. And that's not what I have every night. Sometimes I have more meat, but the, the, the point is um, we advocate balance. And I think sometimes people think they have to eat a lot of meat and eggs and bacon because some people go crazy on that stuff and they love it and that's fine. Um, you know, there, there's plenty of room for experimenting, um, you know, and seeing what works for you. But anyway, what we know is that real food is the answer. And within that realm of real food, we have to figure out what it is that we do best on. And that's why we have our progressions and our programs and our talks because we help facilitate personal experiments. And what we also know is in addition to eating real food, and again, our definition of real food is very broad, very forgiving, and encompasses a lot of other um, methodologies. Also what we know is we have to train the body to be self-sufficient with energy. We have to move the body in a direction of metabolic flexibility and learning how to tap into fat stores. And we're eating bread and pasta and pastry. It's toxic for the body. This is, I mean, we, we could talk for hours on just wheat and grains. And we actually do. We have a great talk called Not All Seeds Are Created Equal. I forgot about that. So we do have a talk where we talk about that at length. But I mean, so set aside the fact that they're toxic for you and they have anti-nutrients that cause a lot of problems in all human beings, all mammals, but then also they're carbohydrates, you know? And so that's a clear indication, if that's the things that you were living on for the most part, that the body has to change and it has to get up out of that habituation. And to do that, it's a very painful process for a lot of people. But anyway, you know, what we know is we have to eat real food and we have to train the body how to have metabolic flexibility and be self-sufficient because this is going to give us long-term health markers, longevity, quality of life, vitality, vibrancy, feeling amazing, clear thinking, optimal body composition, anything and everything that we want. And so we have to get there no matter what it takes. And for some people it takes longer than others and sometimes you have to be patient with it. And that's not to say that you don't want to make some changes as you're going through the process. So um, another thing that we talked about was that um, the way that you think about things and talk to yourself is going to have a huge impact on how your body responds to things. And so um, this person, and, and she admits this, you know, was very negative and focusing on what was wrong and what she liked about things before and everybody's seeing all these changes and she's not and, and focusing on the things that don't feel right. And, um, you know, if I focus on what's wrong in my life, I look for reasons to support what's wrong in my life. And when I find those reasons to support what's wrong, I am more convinced of what's wrong. And by the way, when I think about these things in a negative way, I produce chemistry in my body that gives me an emotion that is tied to that thought. And so I have this strong physical component. I have this mental component. I find reasons to support what I'm thinking about all the time. And that feeds more emotion and more thought. And it's this round what do you call it, round robin or round circle or whatever. It's this vicious cycle and you can't get out of it or it's very difficult to get out of it. Of course you can get out of it. I mean, we, we, we want people to get out of it. We teach people how to get out of it, but it's very difficult to get out of it. And it's important to understand that I need to, as often as I can, focus on the things that I want and focus on the things that are good because then my unconscious mind looks for reasons in the environment to support that. And that makes me feel good. And then feeling good makes me think about the things that make me feel good. And I look for reasons to support the things that make me feel good. And then that makes me feel good again. And that's a good round robin or circle or whatever you want to call it. And so the way that we think about things on a moment to moment basis is extremely important. And, you know, I've had some clients that have been like ultra strict with our protocols and, you know, nothing changed about anything that they were doing. But when their life situation changed and they were happier, all of a sudden they started to lose weight and feel great and skin issues clear up. And it's just, it's, it's kind of magical, but it's not when you understand how all this stuff works. My thinking creates chemistry that I feel in my body and my thinking forces my unconscious mind to look for proof of what I'm thinking in my environment. And that proof feeds it 
and it continues to feed it and it continues to feed it. And so we want to get out of that vicious cycle and circle and think about what are the things that are shifting in a good direction for me? What am I learning? What can I do different? And then when I think about what it is that I want, regardless of what it is, you know, my health, my body composition, the symptoms that I want to see improve. When I think about the things that I want, if I don't know how to get there, my unconscious mind looks for the solutions in my environment to support that. That is one of the keys to life right there. It's just understanding the power of our minds and how the mind impacts everything about our life. And so we had a really good discussion around that. And, um, and, and then when I asked her, I said, what are some good things that you've noticed here recently? Well, since she started the low carb phase, she noticed that she's losing weight, you know, so maybe carbs are an issue, right? Um, she also noticed that she's been eating too much. And I think that's true for a lot of us, you know, like um, she said that her husband cooked these great meals. He's an amazing cook, amazing chef. And, but she felt like she was just eating too much at each one of these meals. And I would say that that's a problem for most of us, you know, like if we, if we tried to mimic the evolutionary template and look at what our ancestors did, and even if you study non-modernized modern hunter-gatherer populations, you'd see like they don't eat all the time. They don't have access to grocery stores 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. They go through feast and famine with and without. And when they do eat, it's usually not a whole lot, you know, most of us probably have excess meals and and even with that most of us when we do things the right way and we eat real food and we eat things in a way that facilitates the body burning fat for fuel like things kind of hop happen automatically and, and appetite regulates automatically and, and all those kinds of things but for some of us it doesn't and so portions is something that we need to be aware of and those were a couple of things that she noticed and, and just by focusing on those good things you could tell her mood perked up and her her uh, color you know changed and, and just everything started to change in a good direction with the conversation so um, so then, you know, we asked us, so what are some things that we can do in the future? You know, so number one, we want to experiment with this cleanse that we have coming up. So we're, we're going to recommend to her and everybody else that we take dairy out for a couple of weeks and nuts and seeds and other things that we might consider problematic, like some uh, like eggs and nightshades. And then also um, understanding that portions and portions with specific macros can count. And just to have this awareness, we don't want to be neurotic about food for sure. And at the same time, we do want to have this background awareness of experimenting with these different things, you know, so I can pull back as a personal experiment on the amounts of food that I'm eating, or I can change the ratios. I can try to see if like having a lot more plant matter and a little bit of meat is going to make an impact or vice versa, because we see people do really good on high meat diets. Um, and then also we learn that carbs are something to experiment with. And so we probably want to go through phases of with and without carbohydrates and just continue to see how that impacts the body because what works for the body today is not going to work for the body in the future. And then we want to experiment with fasting protocols, which we're going to do at this next meeting. So, so those were some, some really positive things and it opened up a really good discussion. And I just want to thank her for giving me the opportunity to share our little story because I felt like it was just really good information to share with other people. And I'm trying to get into the habit of when I get inspired to share this information with all of you, because again, like what we're doing is from the heart and we want to help people and you're not alone. If you're having a hard time with all this stuff, you're in the majority. As a matter of fact, the people that come into this and lose weight and feel great, this is the best thing that ever happened to me. Like that's not the majority, you know, that's, that's like, if we had a bell curve, we have people on one end of the bell curve that are experiencing all these great things immediately, best thing ever. And then we have people that are really suffering. And then we have people in the middle that it's like, you know, it just takes some time and you have to practice love and kindness to yourself and enjoy the process and keep asking questions and make visits with us. You know, that's what we're here for. We've been doing this for a while and we're experts with this stuff and we're always learning too. I mean, we're not perfect. So here's my big takeaways. I hope this wasn't too long, but it's from the heart. Number one, you got to convince yourself of the things that you need to do to be healthy. And what I mean by that is this is something that works for me. When I know that I need to make a change with something, I convince myself this has to be done. And when I convince myself that it has to be done, I might not be perfect with it, but it's, it's, it's there. And I realize this is, this has got to happen. I got to make this happen. I got to make this change. It, it, either now or at some point in the near future, this has got to change for me to feel better and for me to reach my goals. So you have to convince yourself of the things that you need to do to be healthy. And if you need help with that, then maybe do a little bit of further education. I'll recommend a couple of really good foundational books that you can read here. Um, understand that change happens different for everybody. 
okay? Some people experience change right out the gate, some people don't. Actually, I think most people are gonna experience some kind of change, you just have to look for it. Some of it's a lot more subtle than, than, than it is for other people. So just understand, change happens different for everyone. The body prioritizes change in its own way, in its own time, and we don't fully understand why that is. But I can just imagine, maybe the body's priority is not melting fat off my body right now. I mean, not me personally, I'm just saying somebody in general. But maybe the priority is trying to balance hormones or trying to clear a fatty liver, or trying to improve digestion or something like that, right? And then these other things are important, but maybe they're gonna happen a little bit later, you know? Um, so understand the body prioritizes change in its own way, and sometimes it just takes time. I cannot tell you how many people have worked with us and didn't see results in the first six weeks, eight weeks, 10 weeks, or not the results that they were looking for to the degree that they were looking for. But then you check in with them six months down the road, a year down the road, two years down the road. They're some of our biggest supporters. And thank you to all of you who have stayed with us and believed in all this and committed to it because you are amazing and you look beautiful and we love you guys, we really do. All right, um, the third takeaway is always focus on what you want and what's good. And that doesn't mean acknowledge the things that you want to see change. But when you acknowledge those things you want to see change, you want to focus on the thing that it is that you want, not what's wrong. Because understand, the mind, the unconscious mind is going to look for things to support whatever it is that you're thinking about. So if you think about something, you're going to continue to bring that thing into your life and more of it into your life. You're going to produce chemistry in the body that makes you feel like whatever it is that you're thinking, and then you're going to look for more reasons to support it. And so you want to support what it is that you want. Think about what you want. Think about the changes that you want. Think about the things that are happening in a good direction. And if you don't know how to get there, that's perfectly fine because guess what? The unconscious mind works on the principle of least effort. And so if I can just picture what it is that I want and I can see it and feel it and imagine it, then my unconscious mind is going to facilitate that happening in a very fast way. And it's going to open up my environment and let me see and perceive things that support that vision that I'm seeing on a regular basis. And this happens at a level that I probably never see or fully understand. Okay. Um, and then understand that you always need to experiment. So as you're moving forward with this health journey of yours that we're all on, it's all about personal experimentation and seeing what works and understanding that whatever works today doesn't work in the future and vice versa. But I can't just keep doing the same thing over and over and over, right? I have to evolve. I want newness. I want freshness. I want in and out, with and without, ebb and flow, yin and yang, fly in the ointment, uh, monkey in the wrench, I don't know if those are good analogies or not, okay? Um, so we care. We really do. And we love these genuine interactions with people. And guess what? They're not all great, you know? They're not all about all the great things that are happening. Some of us are having challenges and difficulties, and we feel you. We've been there. We're empathetic to that, you know? Um, I fail to remember sometimes I've been doing this for a long time. And so you would expect my stuff to be dialed in and for most of what I do to be almost perfect. You know, yeah, I go to bed at 7.30, I get up at 3.30 in the morning. Yeah, I eat 100% fresh real food almost every day of the week. I mean, it's rare that I go off plan. Yes, I like to have a drink here and there. I'm human, I like to go out and have fun. People that know me know I'm a goof. Um, but anyway, the things that I do for health, like I've been, I've had a long time to hone that. But if I look back in my early years, like I had my difficult struggles and I went through my phase of doing things suboptimally and, and falling off and coming back on and all that kind of stuff, like it's all good, you know? So, um, so we care, we're here to support you in any way that we can. Um, take those points to heart and we love you guys and we'll see you here soon, okay? Hope this is helpful. Give me some feedback if it is. Share it with somebody else if it is, all right? Thanks. Mm -hmm.